Greetings and Shalom. Blessings to you all saints. What a wonderful day this is. It is the day that Yahweh has made and we are encouraged to rejoice and to be glad in it. It is certainly a pleasure to be able to sit with you today to share Yahweh's word. Thank you for joining. As always, please let me know whether you can see and you can hear clearly. As long as you can see clearly and you can hear clearly, then if you don't mind, please share the broadcast with someone who's normally here with us live on Sundays and every other day when we, uh, Yahweh leads us to be here. Greetings to all of you. Shalom speaks to that peace. Shalom speaks to the peace that Yahweh gives us. Uh, that peace that assures us that it is always well. It is always well. It does not matter what happens to us as saints. It, whatever the it is, whatever that it is that is trying to tempt you to become overwhelmed, that it is within Yahweh's wisdom and Yahweh's plan. So today I declare to you that it is well. It is well. You should not be overwhelmed as a saint because the goodness of Yahweh keeps us. We have the all clear great. So if you don't mind, please share the broadcast with someone. Let them know that we're here. Invite them to watch with us because they're not normally here. So tag the person, whatever you do to share the broadcast, I would appreciate it. Amen. Uh, we, are, we are certainly in a time where saints need to be encouraged. Uh, saints need to be edified. Saints need to be strengthened. Because their faith in many instances is being tested. I bid all of you shalom. Blessings to the emissaries who are here with me today. Apostle Lambert and others. Blessings to Prophetess uh, Shanir and others. And to all of you, uh, somebody said I'm echoing, am I? Is there an echo in the sound? That can be from the internet connection. We just want to check. We have one report that is an echo. Shalom, Brother David and others. It's so good to see you all, saints. Hallelujah. Yahweh is good. Always. Always. He is always good. And you cannot say that Yahweh is good and then you're overwhelmed when you are Yahweh's child <laughs> because of some situation arising in your life. If Yahweh is good, okay, so then the person who may have an echo, you may need to either uh, turn your, your speaker down if you're using a, a speaker system or you can leave and then return. All right, thank you so much. And I appreciate those of you who are sharing the broadcast as well. Thank you very much. So we're in Judges chapter 7. And we're speaking to people who are disqualified even before a conflict begins. Brother Tina, the shalom to you. Blessings to all of you saints. People we are addressing today, those who are disqualified from certain events even before a conflict. And that comes from Judges chapter 7. Ah, great. Thank you, Benita. There are people who, many individuals, who are charged uh, in terms of the willingness, the zeal, the passion to fight and to face certain challenges. Okay, Gloria. They are they're eager to engage in terms of conflict resolutions. Thank you, Pastor Mill, for uh, reminding the saints where we are. Judges chapter 7. Javon and others, good to see you in Shalom. There are many individuals who are, especially given what we face across the world with the vaccine mandates and, and so many challenges people are encountering. My son, Pastor Reggie, good to see you. People have got challenges and then there are those who because of what they believe, they, they think that they're qualified to fight. What is interesting is that many people are qualified to fight before the fight came to their doorstep. Many persons believed that they were qualified to fight in reference to systems. And today we're going to address certain things regarding systems and, of course, the anti-Messiah. So there are persons who believe that they're qualified to get into battle because they, from afar, felt that whenever they, or if ever their leaders tell them that they have to face this mandate of vaccinations, then obviously they're prepared for it. But that's from afar. The, the, it's okay. 
Right, thank you. No, that's okay. Come. So the, the, the those who without facing a battle, and just not just the vaccine challenges, there are many things. You may work be working for a company and you hear them say that or you hear it through the grapevine as they say, a little birdie told some of you that certain things are going to happen. Or even in your marriage, uh, you, you, you were told by your spouse that you were going to have, or you sense that there's some crisis that will arise in your house. And the thought before the crisis is that you're ready to fight. Right. You're convinced <clears throat> that based on your faith, based on what you are as a believer, you're convinced that you're ready, you're fully prepared to engage whatever situation it is head on because you have not yet been close enough to the reality of that challenge. There's some of you, so many people I know who, uh, in some cases when they have court matters to deal with, they're okay until the date of the case arrives. Then they begin to tremble. They have all the confidence before, but when they're about to see a human being in the person of a judge or a magistrate, you become nervous. You are convinced about victory, but you have no confidence in your ability to stand strong. And we're going to address anxiety and fear. Anxiety and fear. As saints, neither of those two emotions would ever benefit you in reference to fighting for things that you believe in. Some of you, because of your belief in Yeshua the Messiah, you are ready to go and meet with your pastor, your apostle, your bishop, whoever it is, to say to them, listen, I've come into the knowledge of the truth. I've encountered truth. I have, I am now prepared to walk in truth. And you plan your entire speech in your head as to what you're going to say to this leader when you get there. And from the moment you arrange a meeting or the person texts you to say they're not seeing you, you began to tremble. Because you're not prepared to deal with conflicts and you're not equipped for confrontation. Today my job is not to make you contentious in reference to fighting people for no reason, but my assignment is to make you prepared to contend as a saint. the reality of the world in which you found yourself, in which you always positioned you as a saint, is that confrontation is now inevitable. Contending for what you believe in is now mandatory. It is compulsory. Preparation, and listen to this carefully, preparation for suffering is necessary for every saint. I repeat this. Preparation for suffering, greetings to those of you now joining, is necessary for every saint. Saints must be prepared to suffer. Saints must be prepared to suffer. Listen to the catch. Preparation for suffering doesn't mean that you sit back and say suffering will come to me. No. What it speaks to is you're being taught by Yahweh's servants about how to ready yourself for suffering. Suffering to a saint does not mean that the saint does not contend in the process. Many of you will suffer because you are prepared, you are taught, you are instructed, you follow the Yahweh spirit, you follow the teachings of his servants, and as a result of that, that you are prepared to face that which you will. Whenever it comes your way, you are ready for it. So Judges chapter 7 verse 1, look at this text. In chapter 6, uh, Gideon's name, his name was changed 
but not changed his state, but it was a, was, a, was a nickname or a pseudonym. And by culture, they gave him a name based on his experience. After he destroyed uh, the temple, the, 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 the altar to Baal was in his father's house, and he destroyed the Astoreth, which is the, the pole, sacred pole, Gideon, they called his name Yerubael. Yerubael. So verse 7, chapter, one, chapter 7, verse 1, begins. Then Yerubael, good to see you, son. That is Gideon. So they, they've clarified for us who they're speaking to. And all the people with him. Who are these people? When Gideon sounded a shofar, a, a, a horn, a ram's horn, when he made that sound and he blew it, people began to gather from various tribes. And they began to gather, being eager and being ready to fight for their freedom. When Gideon sounded the shofar, the ram's horn, they heard the sound. And they knew that the sound meant something. The sound meant that they were supposed to prepare themselves to fight someone or to fight some people. They showed up prepared to help Gideon because they responded to a sound and they all wanted to be free. They wanted freedom. Many of you facing this vaccine policies don't want to deal with it. You do not wish to deal with it. You want to be free. Many of you are facing uh, certain other policies in your job. You're facing crisis in your family. You're facing so many things. You want to be free from it. You don't want to have to deal with it. Gideon made a sound with a shofar, which is a, tr a, a ram's horn. And the people were ready. The people were ready to respond. They were ready to fight. It says that Gideon and all the people with him got up early and set up camp by En Harod. The camp of the Midian, Ain Harod, sorry, the camp of the Midian was north of them by Givat Moreh in the valley. Verse 2, Judges chapter 7, verse 2. Yahweh said to Gideon, there are too many people with you for me to hand Midian over to them. There are too many people with you. <laughs> this is so opposed to that which most of you in church have grown accustomed. Most of you over years in your Christian walk, as they call it, you were fully accustomed, always expecting the crowd to support you. You were always expecting to, to have uh, full support. What you call it? A support system. Whenever something happens, especially if you used to give past a lot of money and, and prophet or bishop, whoever they, they are, whenever you are whenever a good tither, and tithe is food, by the way, but it took him on his tithe. Uh, and a good giver, they labor some others as a good giver. When something happens to you, the entire church is prepared at prayer meeting to, to make known your request. And to support you in prayer. But the text says that in order for Yahweh to give Gideon victory, he assessed a situation and, and said, that too many people are with you. Type this please. The support of many is not always healthy. <laughs> the support of many is not always healthy. There are some things that Yahweh will put you in a situation. Sometimes He will position you to make you feel as if you're not late to take your own time. To make you feel as if you are all alone. Listen to my instruction clearly. 
do not complain about it. Let's start here. Whatever is happening in your life, Sister Diane, so good to see you. Yahweh has positioned you sometimes alone to go through it. You should not complain. If Yahweh wants to have multiple people to support you, you will have them because He shall direct them to you. You must not complain about enduring things by yourself because some victories, if not all of them, must always result in your being convinced that had it not been for Yahweh and for Yahweh's grace, you would not have had the experience. Let me make this clear to you. Some of you are not winning because you have too many people to thank if you do. You know too many people that you can call on to solve your problem. And that's why you're not having any victory in reference to what you're expecting. Because there are too many people to whom you'll be grateful after you get through it. You are looking for human support because you are anxious about being by yourself. Even some of you men in the church do not have the courage to stand by yourself to face things. You always want to reach out to somebody else to support you in reference to what you're facing. Good to see you, John. You're right on time. You are supposed to, as a saint, be able to stand alone if you have to. Leave the phone. Put it down. You're supposed to leave the phone and say that even though I have so many people to call, I shall not call on them because Yahweh is going to make me win alone. Your life as a saint is not a life to be lived in a crowd. Many times you'll find yourself in situations where it's just you and your faith, nothing else. Bless you, Nai and Shreed and others. Bless you, uh, Sister Liz. You, you must understand that as a saint, there's some things that you are assigned to go through alone. No one has abandoned you. No, you are positioned for victory. You are not abandoned. You are positioned for victory. You are positioned to understand the power of Yahweh's influence. Bless you, Samuel. Good to see you, sis. Yahweh told Gideon, Judges 7 verse 2, that there are too many people with you from me to hand the enemy over to you. He said, I am not going to allow you to be relieved of the burden of the Midianites because you have too much support. That is contrary to what you've been taught in church for so many years of your life. Because you always felt that you're supposed to call some, and churches give number, oh, call this number, and call the prayer line, and call that. And of course, when you call the prayer line, is that you have to leave an offering. That's a business line. That's not a prayer line. Yahweh has not abandoned you. Neither has he assigned saints to leave you by yourself. What he has done is he has positioned you to win with a different system in place. Type this up, please. You'll be a lot of typing today. You'll be doing a lot of typing today. Too many people are confident in company. Too many saints, not people. I'm addressing the church. Too many saints are comfortable, confident 
in company. Too many saints are confident in company. That's your problem. You have confidence in how many people support you rather than who has positioned you in the situation. Two, Sister Babs, I'm preaching to her. Bless you, bless you, Pastor Babs. Too many saints are confident in company. You have no strength if people are not with you. You have the nerve to even suggest that unless you have certain people's support, you wouldn't make it. Some of you have put so many projects on hold because you didn't get support from certain people. You are waiting for their support to act. Some of you have withheld your letter of resignation because you didn't have enough support. You're not confident that if you, ter if you send this letter of resignation in, you would have the way forward. No, you need, you need a support system. You need to have somebody telling that they give you the equivalent of your salary before you can act. That's good, Aiden. Everything has a price attached to it. Before Yahweh positioned you to fight, he teaches you how to handle processing situations. He doesn't... Uh, uh, many of you talk about, oh, you warfare, warfare. You're not putting warfare unless you understand what you are dealing with. The first thing Yahweh taught me is I must always learn about my enemy. I must know them. Figure them out. Learn strategy. Understand the price that I stand to pay. So many sins here, yeah, you, you yap so much about victory that you haven't learned the ability to process. That's what it'll say. Now, many tribes rushed to fight or to be prepared to fight against Midian, who happened to be the enemy. Many persons ran to give Gideon support to fight. That's GTNT, not me. Is it back? Is it good? Many persons rushed to fight. Are we okay? Just let me know if it's fine. That's my, my, my internet service provider. Once you give me the all clear, we go back to this. Great. Is it okay? Seems to be fine. Okay, good. We're good now, right. Yahweh said... that the people who showed up to help Gideon to fight, they're going to say that it was their strength that did it. And in order to prevent Gideon's support system from boasting Yahweh spoke to Gideon, not the support system. Let's take our time with this. Gideon had the assignment to en engage the enemy and deliver Israel. When Yahweh saw the mind of the people, when he saw the, 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 the number of people who showed up to help Gideon, he said, now listen here. You have got too many people supporting you in this battle. So what I'll do is, I'll inform you about what they'll say if they win, which is that we saved ourselves. No glory goes to Yahweh. Which is why I said to you, many of you are able to call too many people and to boast about what they've done for you. Hence, you lose sight of who has positioned you in the situation in the first place.
Yahweh has made some people who are always there for you become absent at this time in your life. They've become indifferent, some of them. Some of them have got an issue with you. They don't even want to say much to you because you had confidence in their support. You were boasting that they will always be there for you. They always got your back. Got your back? You had so much confidence in their ability to give you advice to get you out of things that you didn't have an issue going through certain things anymore. But when you have no one, you've begun to complain. Instead of rejoicing in the fact, listen to this, that your Father in heaven has positioned you because of your maturity. He has now looked at you and realized that A, you have the ability to hear what he's saying. You have learned to have confidence in the utterances of Holy Spirit. You've also learned to have confidence in the message of his preachers. You can hear things and say, this is Yahweh speaking. As Pastor Bob said it earlier, that I'm speaking to her. You can hear things and say, okay then, this right here, that has to be Yahweh talking to me. Because there's no way that I could be in Ghana and know what some of you are going through. I don't talk to you all the minute, every minute. And it's for a reason. It's for a reason. There are many saints who I deliberately do not say much to because you have to learn to grow up beyond my face. And beyond the face of somebody who's always there for you and learn that you, you, you win by what you hear and in Hebrew hearing means what you do. You win by what you hear because faith comes by hearing. Some of you are not winning. Oh, you get mad at this one right here. Because you are reading too much. You always want to open your Bible to find some scripture verse of victory. Stop it. Faith comes by hearing. If you're not gifted to teach a church, you shouldn't be opening any Bible to do anything. Here we go. And the church fell apart. <laughs> Faith comes by hearing. You are not winning because you're reading too much. You don't want to listen to anybody. I will type some things, say some things today that will, that will shatter some of your religion. Shake it to pieces. Yahweh is not pleased by reading. Yahweh is pleased by faith. Without faith or trust, it is impossible to please Yahweh. You want to read your way to victory and you keep losing all the time. Because you have a religious system by which you function. <laughs> Pastor Mel, you've got it. Yep, whatever you go through, oh yeah, I love it. I don't care what you tell me. Yes, I love it. Wonderful. Go, I'm glad. Good. Go through it. Faith does not come by what you read. When Yahweh saw an opportunity for Gideon to not be able to function under Yahweh's principle, he said, now I'll stop before, before it even happens. Yahweh stepped in and stopped it before it even happened. He said, hey, there are too many people with you for you to win this. You are mature enough to hear a preacher and to know the truth being spoken by that preacher. You could hear and you can know based on what you've heard, this is the truth. You can know that. But no, before you go to that meeting, you have to open your Bible. Get your phone, you have to open your Bible and read a verse or two and think you have confidence. Or you have to call your prayer partner, your little devil beside you somewhere who has no faith, who trusts in, in a fake European God named Jesus. And you have to call a devil in your mother, 
to pray for you and you trust in Yahweh, you trust in Yeshua, but you just want to hear somebody say something to you that makes you win. Some of you call lying prophets. To prophesy comfort, not truth. What else do you do? You want to fast and pray. You want fast on the day of court. Stop it. Type this, please. Victory does not come from human effort. It comes from faith, trusting in Yahweh. Victory does not come by human effort. It comes through trusting in Yahweh. If you do not have confidence in Yahweh, you can do all the rituals, and you prefer to do these rituals, you are religious. You're not faithful. When you're faithful, you sit and you say, listen here, I know in whom I believe. Forgive me, I have to drink a lot of water. I raced for 80 miles a day in the, in the sun. I almost died. <laughs> so, and I came straight off the bike, took a shower and came straight on to talk to you. So have mercy on me, I have to drink a lot. When you have confidence in your God, let me tell you what to do. You, you know that the court case is tomorrow and this is your juice or your grape, not, not wine. Because I'm going to drink wine and get drunk and go to court. <laughs> but you have your glass. You know that you're supposed to face the judge and you're sipping. And they're saying, now how could you be so comfortable? Because I know in whom I believe. You don't have to run to no chapel and, 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 and talk in tongues. No, you're not wrong, Mel. You just said it. I told you mature enough to hear, hear, hear the truth. When you understand who you trust in, you are prepared for battle. Adnan who won? Jamal John won. I suffered immensely, but he won. <laughs> When you are trained for battle, you understand how to function in adversity. When confrontation is before you, you understand how to function in it. You do not function by anxiety. So let's go to the text. Judges chapter 7 verse 3. Therefore, Yahweh said to him, because people will say we've saved ourselves by our own strength, Yahweh said to Gideon, Proclaim to the people who came to support you. Listen to this. Tell them, anyone who is anxious or afraid should go back home. While we stay here on Mount Gilead. Listen to this. Anyone who is anxious or afraid should go back home. Uh-oh. The teacher said that I'm living in the U.S. My job said to me, my last day to work was Thursday because I didn't take the vaccine. But I'm not worried. There you go. That's, that's the word of a, faith, of a saint. Yahweh will give you wisdom to function in a better position. Bless you, Sister Mish. So, so, so Yahweh said to Gideon, say this to these same people who are so excited to fight the battle with you. Tell them, if you're anxious or you're afraid, go home. So, Gideon had 20 plus thousand people prepared to support him. But although they came to support him, Yahweh knew that their support was a response to a sound they wanted to have. That's tall man good. They wanted to have uh, relief. From the stress that the enemy was causing them. But Yahweh said to Gideon. You look at the same people who came to support you. And tell them if, you, if you're anxious. And if you're afraid. Go back home. It's alright. He said we'll stay right here. Ah. Good. Alright Abdullah. Good man. Thank you. 
So he said, tell them we will stay here on Mount Gilad. Gideon will remain on the mountain. Those who are anxious and afraid were going to go home. Let's see what happened. Scripture records in Judges chapter 7 verse 3 that 22,000 men returned. But 10,000 remained. So he had 32,000 with him. 22,000 by one announcement. 22,000 men went. Just one word. If you're anxious or you're scared, go home. And 22,000, one-third, departed. Fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety. When you are anxious as a saint, it can lead to what is called paranoia. You see things that will never even happen. You are convinced that they will. Ready for the other part? And most of what you see speak to your being defeated. You just know for some reason that this is what a person will do, that's what they'll say, that's what will happen, and this will happen next, and I'll lose this, and I'll lose that. When you are anxious, it leads to paranoia. You get paranoid. You begin to create images in your mind that always point to your losing. The opposite is when you have trust. Shalom, Clinton. Shalom, Jesse. When you have trust in Yahweh, JR, good to see you. When you have confidence in Yahweh, you are able to, which is called trust, you see victory. When you're anxious, you create images in your mind that say you lose. That's why I don't, I don't fear politicians. I don't fear anybody. Because the images I see are never about my losing. When I look at what I'm facing, even in Guyana, regarding these, these, these dictatorial measures that I must put in my body, what I don't want, I don't see defeat. <laughs> A Muslim said, most Christians can't stand this message. That's quite true, Adnan. Adnan. Saints, I do not see myself losing because I said it from day one, my stance is an independent one, an individual one. If the whole of Guyana turned it back against me, I'll still stand against what it, what it is. Because I have never needed a crowd to stand in the first place. My confidence is not in who supports me. It's in who has assigned me to stand. I say to you again, my confidence is not in who supports me. My confidence is in who has, has assigned me to stand. Therefore, I shall stand. Somebody say, Apostle, get like this and I'm afraid. Right. People, you, you begin to see things. You begin to create. Oh, you've been called to a meeting. You begin to see the whole meeting in your head. And you see that the supervisor, the superiors will always win. I have sat in meetings with supervisors and superiors. And they had a notepads or whatever. And I told them, write what I, write what I say. I wasn't afraid of anything. I met with the principal when I was teaching overseas, the vice principal, my head of the department, and I was there. Three of them, and only me. In a very xenophobic society, they didn't like foreigners in, just in many instances. And I sat there and I said, no, hold on. After the head of the department spoke up part and, and accused me of all kinds of things, I said, no, you write what I say. The vice principal had a, had a log book, which is a record for the Ministry of Education overseas. I said, number one, write that I am a, a saint of the Most High. Yeah, we have a meeting, professional meeting, and I'm speaking as a saint. If you accuse me falsely, my God shall deal with you. The lady hold her pen. I said, write what I say. You wrote what she said, now write what I say. 
I didn't get nervous and said, oh my God, I lose my job, lose job. I said, you will write what I say. Why you have a logbook if you're not writing in it? Oh, we keep it professional. I said, this is as professional you can get. Write what I tell you. Because the record will show that this they do falsely accuse me, my God shall deal with you. In this same school system, they will know that the God I serve is true. So write. And I sat beside the vice principal and I read what she said to what she wrote. Write what I say. My God shall deal with you. It is so bad that when I was about to leave that country, they said that I was the only person in the whole Bahamas whose name was London, whose last name was London. They said, boy, you can do wrong. If you did wrong, we catch you tomorrow. Because there's nobody else in this whole country whose name was London. I did not create an image of defeat. I saw victory. I said, you want to lie about me? You want to give false to misrepresent the truth? Now I present to you the, what the truth is. My God shall fight with you. And the school will know it. Write that please ma'am. Write it. I said and it shall not happen after I leave either. While I'm here. You'll be made an example. So you won't do it again. The vice principal, of course, didn't want to put a pen to the people. I said, Mom, write what I say because you wrote everything she said. So let the logbook record what I've said. Do you know what happened? And some of you saints know, know this, about this matter. And teachers in the school know the matter too. And the principal and the vice principal know the matter. Of the matter. Also, the woman who did it to me knows of the matter. When I got through something, I had to say, I said, no, hold on. For me, the meeting is finished. I have nothing to say to you all. That was unusual for a Guyanese in a foreign land because obviously Guyanese aren't supposed to behave this way. You went there for money and never went there for money. And that, by the way, was the time when I announced, or would have announced, that I, I quit. That was, a, that was a quitting season for me. So I said, all right, when we got out of the meeting, I kid you not, we walked out of the meeting. Actually, I walked out of the meeting because I was done with them. I got up and left. After I ensured the vice principal wrote what I said, I got up and walked outside. Saints behind me, when I walked upstairs, turned left on the corridor. I never forget this. I'm seeing as clear, clear as ever. I heard one ruckus behind me. Children screaming. Teachers running opposite me. When I turned around, guess who was on the floor? Guess who had fainted? The same one who just walked out of the office. Fell flat. Thank you so much. Fell flat on the floor. No, that was the following morning, sorry. Blackout. Out cold. This wasn't 25 hours after. Three days, the following morning. Out cold. Just fainted. And I turned around to see what happened. When I looked, there she was laying on the floor, blackout. I parted the Red Sea. I parted the crowd and looked. The principal was there. The vice principal was also there. And they all knew. They actually they called me afterwards and said, Mr. Lonnie, you're a man of God, whatever that's supposed to mean. You're a real man of God. I know there's a fake man of God. But she said, you're a real man of God. Only yesterday you said this will happen. I picked my enemy up. Put her in my car. I said, put him in, put her in my car. I drove her. And while driving to the hospital, her words in the back seat when she came to were, I don't know what's happened to me, Mr. London. <laughs> I just fainted like this. You fainted like that? She knew just what happened. That wasn't all. Within three days, she was sent for by the, by the superiors in the Ministry of Education, the Department of Education. And they told her she has to go and do a psychiatric evaluation because she's out of her mind. She sat in a meeting telling the, supervisor, the superintendent of the island, um, do you ever sit and see clouds over you like dark clouds? See, there are clouds, let's say what happened to you. 
Are you of sound mind? She said, I just see clouds over me, dark clouds, dark clouds. Why? I said it. It's on record at Abaco Central High School. It's on record. I said, my God shall fight against you. My utterance was not made in fear. I saw her losing. I saw defeat. When you function by faith, all you see is defeat of your enemies. You never see that you're losing. Saints never lose. How you could see yourself losing in some situation? You are not supposed to look at yourself as losing because you lack support. Victory is not dependent on support. Type that please. Victory is not dependent on support. Victory is determined by Yahweh. Victory is not dependent on support. Victory is determined by Yahweh. Whatever you're facing, your victory is not dependent on support. It is determined by your God. Why must I fear sinners, heathens, heathens, wretched people? Why should I fear them? For what? We have some supervisor telling you you have until Monday. Who do you think they're talking to? Some of you all work in the wrong place. You need to work with me. Let me help you to help them. You have until Monday to take a vaccine or, or don't come back. Ask them who you think you're talking to. Because your job already on the line anyway. So you tell them straight to their face who you think you're talking to. Not, oh, sir, please understand. And please. No, there's nothing to understand here. Who? If you're a saint, you ask the question, who you think you're talking to? Because if I you anyhow, I haven't the money to take something in my body that I don't want. Who do you think you're addressing like that? When you have confidence in your God, you don't fear men. And there are too many saints who are anxious. You create pictures of failure. Then the next thing that you do, after you create the picture of failure, you seek support to give you confidence. So you know that in your head, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to lose. I, I, I will lose this, I'll lose whatever it is. So let me find a few people who can support me while, 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 just in case everything falls apart. You don't live your life like that as a saint. I said saint and saint walk in the room. I have a puppy, my daughter's a puppy named Saint. You do not live your life in that manner as a saint. Stop creating images of your being defeated. Oh, I think I lose my car. So what? Uh oh, there you go. My son said I have until January to get a vaccine and I'm walking fine. There you go. Deadline. What do you see? Who do you see? Who do you look to? Where does your confidence lie? 22,000 men turned away because they were told, if you're anxious, you're free to go. No problem. Some of you saints will keep people around you because they, even though they're anxious. Some of you, you're not afraid. But they're telling you that you should be afraid. They're giving you all of the scenarios that you should be fearful. Oh my God, girl, you have a child, you have a family, you have a son, you have a daughter, you have the... They begin to paint all of the pictures to you, hoping that you get nervous on the job like them. And you call that support and got your back. Do not depend or associate with people, depend on or associate with the people, who create images for you in reference to defeat. Don't do that. 
Do you know many people told me that I should just be quiet after all you came to earn money? I never came, went to the Bahamas to earn any money. You should not be living your life hanging around people who suggest to you that fear is the best option. The next thing they tell you all is, come, you have to go find a pastor. Girl, I have a pastor. My pastor can pray for you. Can pray you out of this. Pray you out of what? Apostle Thomas, good to see you. Pray you out of what? Listen to me. Oh my God, you need to, sorry to have me type someone, but this is to help you. Some of you need to watch this again. And type this question, please. Who can pray me out of Yahweh's will? You type that. All your support system you got around you, you type this question for them. Who can pray me out of Yahweh's will? If you believe that you are in Yahweh's will, who is praying you out of it? You want deliverance service? Take believer from what? Who can pray you out of Yahweh's will? I am positioned, you are positioned in your Father's will. That's how we live. We live by faith. We live by trusting because we trust and we believe that whatever we are in, listen to me, man, the scripture records that the steps of the righteous are ordered, meaning they are determined by Yahweh. So who praying you under this will? What insanity are sins behaving with? Because you scared you calling the whole world to pray for you. Who can pray you out of Yahweh's will? Who? You are positioned in the will of your father. If you don't believe it, you need to pray about that because you have a faith issue. You have a trust issue. I believe that wherever I am, I am positioned in my father's will. So you don't waste the time trying to fight me because your fight is a part of his will. And don't think that you get me to speak of defeat. Even if I stand before a judge and the judge says I'm guilty, I haven't been defeated. I'm still in my father's will because he has assigned me to be, to be persecuted. Blessed are you when you're persecuted for my name's sake, when you're persecuted for my name's sake. You are fortunate. You are highly favored. You crying. You praying for, 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 for prayer partners come and deliver you from something. Deliver you from what? Some of these companies who want to fool with some, some of you, they will go out of business while you start your business. You keep watching the news, you'll see some merger and somebody been dissolved somewhere. And some of your managers are gone. Let them bother with you. Yahweh orders your steps, saints. Stop being afraid. So scripture records that 22,000 people turned away and went back home because of anxiety and fear. When you are anxious, you are disqualified before you even face one enemy. Why? Since you see defeat. When you are anxious, you are disqualified before you face an enemy because you have already seen defeat. Yahweh had told Gideon that he will deliver Israel. Now once you have a word called victory or a word of victory, you should never see defeat in your future. I don't care who stands before you. I do not mind who's standing before you. If you have a word of victory or an assurance of victory, you should never see defeat in the process. Yeshua the Messiah referred to us through, or Yahweh's Spirit referred to us through Shaul as being more than conquerors. 
if you are more than a conqueror, how can you see defeat? Please bear with me, please tolerate me for another minute and type that inconvenience is not defeat. Inconvenience is not defeat. If you have to start catching the bus or the train instead of driving your car, that's not defeat. That's inconvenience. Anxious people are either afraid to use faith or to live by it, or they don't understand it. Anxious people are afraid to use their faith or afraid to live by their faith, or some of them do not understand faith in general. Anxious people are fearful people. An apostle Thomas just typed it, be anxious for nothing. You should not be anxious about anything because anxiety creates paranoia. You see what isn't there. You may be inconvenienced. Who said you should be defeated because you've been inconvenienced? You may be inconvenienced. It doesn't mean you are defeated. You are more than a conqueror. Can you imagine having 32,000 people around you and at one announcement that if you're scared or, or you're anxious, go home, 22,000 walk away. Ah, uh, that's good brother Paul Question. He's asking about whether the scripture, if that's a scripture for us, it is difficult for a rich man to inherit the kingdom. It is. Because rich people have confidence in money. They believe they can pay anything. They can get the best attorneys, and the best attorney will represent them. Saints don't want the best attorneys. Saints, need, saints, saints have faith. I actually get upset with Guyana school system because the judges in Guyana and magistrates generally want to coerce or force or mandate to some extent us to have representatives at all cost. I don't like that because I like standing before them and talk for myself. And I've had cause to do it in some instances where I start before the judge and say, with an attorney, and say, Your Honor, may I speak? And oh, the Your Honor said, Yes, you may speak. Oh, Lord. And I surely did speak. And look at my attorney, and that's when the judge said, Now hold on. All oh, this happened, and the attorney didn't say to me. Because he turns in there full as if he's scared to talk. Ten thousand people remained with Gideon. Ten thousand persons remained. For as four Yahweh said to Gideon, there's still too many people. There's still too many people. Even with 10,000, there are still too many. Now, most of you know this text by heart in reference to the account. But you must always be prepared to see deeper and hear deeper than what you see. The Midianites were too numerous to count. There were multitudes of them. Scripture says in verse in chapter six they were like locusts. But the expectation should be that if there are many, you need to have many too. So you can even out this fight. Tika says she wants to run the house and scream. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> you can't run to see that happen. <laughs> If the enemy is numerous, 
then the expectation would be that you should have a, a, a large following too. No. No. There are people who are prepared to support you. But they are disqualified by the God you serve. They are individuals who are, who are ready to support you. But the God you serve, Yahweh, Elohim, is not prepared to use them. They are individuals who are eager to come to your aid, but they are a liability to your victory. You should be careful about who helps you out of inconvenience. As Yahweh looked to Gideon's support base, the crazy thing, because I said most of you know this text, the crazy thing you need to note is this 32,000 people showed up to help Gideon. How could Yahweh see 32,000 being too many when the Midianites were too numerous to even count? You get that? 32,000 could be numbered. Yahweh looks at 32,000 in reference to too numerous to count and says that although there are so little of you, I'll still call you many. Although you're so few in number compared to the number of Midianites and Amalek uh, uh, who, who did fight you, I'll still say that 32,000 is too much. That's crazy. That's insane. Because the, the enemy, one group, the Midianites, according to this same Judges chapter 6, were too numerous to even count. And Yahweh says that 32,000 which could be counted, that's too many to help Gideon. So he was prepared to reduce Gideon's support to an impossible number. Whatever you have in your hand and you think about your business, you are thinking about a loan to get you started. Because what you have is too little to realistically begin. Here's my instruction to you, begin. Do it. And this is free business advice. You don't have to pay me for this. Businesses succeed with ideas, not money. If you have the right mentality, if you can think right, money will always follow you. Remember Bronson? Virgin Atlantic, I think it is. The guy was walking in the street. Looked up in the sky and saw planes and said, Hey, I could, do, I could figure out a way to make this easy for people. He called certain people and shared his idea. That gave him a billion dollar company. Just by calling. He had no money. He didn't have an office. He had a phone. And eyes. And you look up and said, okay, then okay. Then I could figure this out. There's a way that I can actually make, create an airline that, that really works. That is customer focused. I'll treat my employees a certain way. That make them offer services that are next second to none. I think the Virgin Atlantic is one of those. But what did he do? He simply had an idea. He didn't have the money. He had a thought. Stop waiting for the money. Yahweh wants to give you or is planning to give you success through impossible means. That's the kind of season you're in right now as a saint. Success by impossible means. You wouldn't believe it.
There are two men I'll talk about, and they've inspired me. <laughs> Apostle Josh may be sleeping by now, Apostle Thomas. One, Apostle Thomas plants in a sandy area. I don't, I can't figure this out. Apostle Thomas has a garden and trees. He plants anything, anywhere, and it grows. He plants whatever it is. And they grow. Apostle Joshua plants in, a, in hard mud like concrete. And I went to see him the other day and was blown away by the greenery in his farm. As green as ever. And it's only a few months ago I saw him. And was shocked to see how these, these products he has are thriving in the heat. Why? It's a, I told you all, you're living in a season now where you'll have success by impossible means. It may sound simple to you. I poked my hand in the soil to the compost and it was like rock at the bottom. And his plants are blooming. Some are short like this and putting out blossoms, ready to produce fruit. Apostle, uh, Apostle Paul, by call Apostle Paul, that's good. Brother Paul Bennett says we're living this now in your business. You are going to have success. Success. By impossible means. Stop waiting for some bank to tell you it's okay to do something. No bank has a kind of power over you. Since Diana said it, start a business, you had no money. All you had was an idea and fabric. And look at her now. You are waiting for a bank to tell you that it's okay. Why? Why wait? You are anxious, so you, you even see a business failing before you even start. You see you have customers. Says who? You see that if you cook, they want to buy your food. Says who? You, do, you know, do you see the kind of food people buy on the road compared to some, what some of your cook? Do you see some tasteless nonsense that people sell and they make money? And you have everybody telling you how, how wonderful your food tastes, but you're scared to cook. I see people yesterday I was traveling, flip the, the, the hatch, the back, the trunk of the car, take the pot out, put it on the table, and they're selling food. And saying, saying well, well, oh my God, how will I live? How will you live? You will have success by impossible means. Some of you can make the best barbecue in the world, make it and sell it. You your own boss. This is your time to realize what opportunity is. And before I leave you, I want to leave you with a prayer for you that Yahweh will cause most of you, many of you, to negotiate differently. Not as an employee, but as a business partner. As a supplier, not an employer. Stop applying for jobs. And begin to apply for opportunities to sell what you have. To market your product. You sit at home busting your head as to where do I work next? With yourself. Bless you, Shahid. That's who you work with. You plant a garden and, and you make, you, you, you have produce, sell it. Thank you, Marie. Some need approval from friends. That too. Problem. They say it won't work and you believe it. Quit waiting for approval. Negotiate differently. Stop going online to see how to, how to uh, answer questions in an interview. Stop it. Your season for that may be over. Somebody said they started out with a bank loan. It's almost finished. There you go. There you go. The witnesses are here. 
She should say she makes flat bake, sell it, put some salt fish inside. You're gone. I pray that Yahweh gives you the strength and the courage to negotiate differently. Negotiate as a partner. It doesn't matter who you're negotiating with. Don't think you have to go to some major company and talk to them. Practice small. Somebody makes the bread, you make something to go along with the bread. Pepper pot, sell it. Package it, put in containers, sell it. Pepper's a guy needs this, by the way. Whatever it is. You know how to write well? People need a job? You type a letter for them. Start a bit of consultancy. You, you, you market yourself. I am glad that some people tell you all you have until a certain time to take a job because now you'll be able to function on your own. You know medicine? Connect with the clinic. Private somewhere. Begin to do things on your own. Offer your services. Yahweh is positioning most of you in a new era where you're not going to always have to fill some application form. No, people will apply to you. I'll be honest right now making pepper pot. People shall apply to you. They'll call you. Don't worry. Even if they have to call you on the phone and say, um, can I, do you have space to help somebody wash dishes? Whatever it is, you're going to learn to be a boss. You should make float. Whatever you make, I'm telling you, sell it. Do not be anxious. If you're anxious, you will always see your business failing. See victory. Some saints have no ability to cook. Nothing. You can cook to save your life. But you could sell though. What do you do? Find those who can cook. You talk with them. Look at, look at how saints could network. You know how to sell, but do not cook. You can sell anything. You can sell a grain of rice if you want to. But you don't know how to cook. So what do you do? You find saints who can cook various things and you have a restaurant that people supply you with the products, you sell it. So you pay the saints to make something and you sell it because you have the skill to sell. I'm here to tell you, stop being anxious because you'll be disqualified before you even confront anything. Before you confront any situation, you've lost because of anxiety and fear. Finally, fear convinces you that you are too weak to do anything. That's what fear does. Fear convinces you of weakness instead of strength. Fear convinces you of weakness rather than strength. That's the main thing about fear. Fear will always make you believe that you're too weak to do it or to say it or to be it. Fear will convince you. You're a brother, you know how to build things, you know how to work, use your skill. Market yourself. If you're scared, you believe you have to work for a company because you, you cannot pay yourself. You cannot make it. Wow. Mariah says she started a company, paying people from her salary, now she's working for herself. The company is now paying. Fear convinces you that you are too weak to do something or to be something. You may want to study law. Fear says you can't do it because you can't read. When you're reading all the time. And some of you are married, sadly, to agents of fear. They tell you things that will always make you think you can't get it done. Do not hear them. 
do not listen to them. Some of your spouses will always try to convince you that you'll fail. They're mean and they're silly. Do not listen to them. You love them, but don't listen. Do not listen to them. Get it done. Yahweh is your helper. Get it done. Unfortunately, some men, instead of being strength and strong, they're convincing you or trying to convince you you shouldn't do it when they should be encouraging you to get it done. I generally, as a father and as a husband, do not discourage my children and my wife from doing things, from trying, unless it's really, really ridiculous and it wouldn't work. But generally, try. The only issue I have with some of them is try. Don't pick, 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 pick. Do something. Stick to it. Get it done. But I make investments in my children's ideas. They must not be afraid to try. I don't mind how young they are. Try. You are not a failure if it didn't work. You're brave enough to try. I don't tell my wife that I can't work, don't try. No, go ahead. Get it done. My girl yesterday, she wants to talk about dog breeding business. We, I have space in the yard. We built kennels. Breed a dog. Not a mine. Try. You know, my wife doesn't uh, decorations. I'm sitting in her room. Everything, she has a whole room now. Beginning from a little corner, there's an entire storage facility built for her uh, ace, a lady creative expression stuff. Why? Because she's going to try. Keep doing it. I'm talking about getting her a van, a little mini van so that she can drive around the place because her business has grown that much. Why? Because I never stopped her from trying. Keep trying. Out of mind. And just like that, with my encouraging her to keep trying, she's now growing to think about having a school that teaches people how to do this. That's when you go on major. When you, when you could now have a school for interior designing and a school for event preparation, you know she's growing because she was not discouraged. She was told to keep trying. Do it. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll be honest that I start poultry sewing, now I'm selling fast food. My goodness, there you go. Women, you could make it. You can do it. Do not be fearful, do not be anxious. See, my wife is responding right there. My daughter responded as well. The little one, she doesn't have Facebook, but she's a photographer. She does, what else she does? Nails. I'm playing with y'all. I have an air-conditioned room, so when she's ready, she, she's a, she does nails pretty well. She's practicing on her sister and so on and others. When she's ready, the, the studio is available. Because my children are going to learn that they will not be prepared to serve some master caller job. They're going to be prepared to own companies. They will not serve some system.
My goodness. Look, Brother Clinton, I was scared of heights. Now he's a chief high voltage lineman. My goodness me. Listen here. Yahweh is faithful, man. Yahweh is so faithful. Apostle Thomas is no different. We, Apostle Joshua as well, his children are in business with him. That's how we process, that's how we function. We push our children. Many of you are out there, of course, you're not preaching, so I'm talking about me. But we are able to encourage our children to function. My children are going to grow up. I don't care how, what scale it is on. They will learn the power of working for yourself. And then you connect with other saints. You market, you network, you function. And before you know it, look at what you have. Sister Sancho, for example. I saw her. Sancho, I call her. Ready, set, grow. Making waves here in, 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 in Linden and with companies really is, uh, is offering services that, that are not found around here. Because that's what we do as saints. You are in a position where you shall succeed. My goodness. Look, Prophet Eshenir, my son grows lemon trees from seeds and sells them. Look at that. Pastor Reginald has his son in the company learning how to run it, the shipping company. That's how we function. We're going to have children. Uh, uh, uh. Sister Cecil just joined us here. She has a farm. Her daughters are learning. I am telling you all saints, this is with, I, I feel it within me today. We have to teach our children because of the evil system. That's why I say we talk about systems today. The evil system, the evil system that's around us, please teach your children to be self-sufficient. And teach them the power of working with others. Not for others. As a saint, you learn that. Even my niece. Who's gone into, 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 into space exploration uh, uh, studies and stuff like that. Good. Work with them. That's why you must see yourself even as an employee. You must see yourself as having something they need and you're going to work with this company, not for anybody. Learn to negotiate differently. I am going to work with you to solve your problem. You want to get to Mars, you want to get to the moon, you want to get to wherever it is, I'll work with you. Teach your children the difference between working for someone and working with someone. When you have confidence in who you are, you work with people. Rita, I have given much thought about starting credit union. It will, it will happen. I promise you it will. Because that's how we shall finance not just saints, but the average person who, who thinks or who's experienced these, these, these uh, terrible banks. These bankers who believe, some of them, that they have your, your future in their hands, credit unions will knock them off the shelf. Shondal has started a food business. There you go. Food spices. Hallelujah. There you go. So she's selling spices. Somebody wants to cook. You know to find the spice from. Come here. Don't waste time. Start, start locking people in here. In 5, 2, 3, 10, 20 years from now, you would not know. You wouldn't believe the extent which your family would develop based on your principles. In all of this, you need somebody to help you with, it, with the accounting because that's very important. What do you do? Find the saints who can do it. Because we will learn and we will show the world how light functions. I love you all. I thank Yahweh for all of you. I appreciate the time you spent with me. Yahweh is faithful. 
I pray. Oh my goodness. Professionally starting a daycare and homeschooling business. Hallelujah. This is the time I told you. It's going to be different for y'all. It's happening all around us. And that's the faithfulness of Yahweh. Thank you all so much, saints. I appreciate it. Sandal finished nutrition school a year ago and I've been too scared to start my practice. Now, there you go. Thank you for this. You will start. 